What's up guys, it's River, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of your Sony a6400. Whether you've had this camera for a while or you just got it, in this video, I'm gonna show you every single thing that you need to know to get the most out of this camera. So, let's get into it. Also, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything on how to use camera gear, including teaching you guys how to take better photos and videos. So if you like this video, and you know, I hope you do, please leave a like, helps the channel out, helps me keep making more of this content for you guys, and we just hit 100,000 subscribers. That plaque back there is what YouTube gives you for hitting 100,000. So I promise you, it is a very, very worthwhile subscription, and I recommend being part of the camera community that we have here on this channel. So. With that being said, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so let's talk about where all the physical buttons on this camera are, what everything does, and you also may notice that there's a gigantic camera next to my head. This camera is recording the a6400 so you guys can get a better view. So the first button we're gonna look at is the on and off button. And now most of you guys don't know this, but it turns the camera on and off. I'm just kidding, but that's the on and off button. And right next to it is the C1 button. Now this is a custom button that you can pretty much set to anything through the menus, but the defaults for what it comes with is your autofocus mode. And I actually recommend keeping it on that because honestly, there's no quicker way to change your autofocus. So C1 for me on my personal Sony cameras is still autofocus. And next to that is this dial right here. Now this kind of has like a sticky feel to it. It's called having a stepper dial, and basically you can use this to change your shutter speed or aperture, depending on what you wanna do with it. Personally, I use this to change my aperture, and it works the best for me. And the next thing we're gonna look at is this black anonymous knob. Now, it doesn't have a label because you can change it to anything you like. It comes preset as your aperture, and I actually recommend leaving it as aperture for most shooters, video, or photo, because your shutter speed generally stays constant depending on how fast your subject is moving, but your aperture is usually the thing that changes. And next to that is the mode dial with all these labels. Now, most of these labels you can totally ignore because these are modes that you will never use. The ones that you'll probably use the mode is, first of all, A, this little auto thing, you know, just basically does everything for you. Next to that is M. Now, M basically means manual. This is only for photo mode, manual photo mode, basically allows you a control over your shutter speed, aperture, and ISO independently, because these other modes, basically what happens is if you change your shutter, it'll change your aperture for you, or if you change your aperture, changes your shutter for you. Personally, I think that is, is, they're just not good modes to use, because if you're gonna go with automatic settings, you may, may as well go with full auto. So for that reason, I recommend most people skip A, P, A, S, all, the, all these modes, and just go straight to manual or stick with auto. And after that, you'll notice this weird square icon. That's actually a film strip. Now, if you're in your teens or in your early 20s, you're like, what the heck is film? Well, kids, film was this thing that dinosaurs like me used to shoot video before there was digital. I highly recommend doing a Wikipedia search, but that is a film strip and that is your video mode. Now, I will talk about how to use all of these modes to the best of your advantage, but I want to show you guys where everything was uh, just as like a beginner brief overall. And after that, let's go to the back of this camera. So the things you need to know on the back of this camera is first of all, your menu button, this button right here with the lightning bolt, you know, Harry Potter vibes here. Uh, that menu button is your flash. It will basically, if you have your camera off and you hit this, your flash will pop up. Ta-da. Now something to note, this button right here at the top is what allows you to take photos, but this will not work in video mode. The way to record video is to actually hit this button with the red dot on it on the side, and this is what's going to help you record video, or really, it's the only way to record video. But later in this video, I'm gonna show you how to come up with a hack or a fix on how to use this shutter button to actually record video. And after that, let's look at the FN button right here. Now, this is going to bring up your function menu or your quick menu, and this is the best way to operate your camera. The menus in the Sony cameras are really, really cumbersome, and this is the quickest way to change all of your settings. After that, you'll have your little squir scroll wheel that you can use to change all of your settings. Depending on what kind of a menu you're in, this is going to do different things, but if you're not in a menu, this is also going to change your shutter speed. If you go to the left, it'll lower your shutter speed, go to the right, it will raise your shutter speed. And also, at the same time, if you hit right on it, it'll bring up your ISO menu, and if you hit 
up, it will bring it will change your display, and if you hit left, it will bring up your different uh, drive modes. Now this now as you can see, I'm getting an error message right here. So for this, I have to actually be in manual mode, and then when I hit this, it will bring up different drive modes. Now I'll talk more about this later, but uh, this is a pretty general overview of where everything on the camera is. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about is if you hit this little button with the triangle It will bring up whatever you've shot on your car like photos and videos I don't have a card in this right now But this is how you access what you've shot on your card next to that is the trash can item So if you want to delete something um, But if you hit it when you're not in the playback menu, it'll bring up your white balance and honestly Leave your camera not a white balance Camera does a great job with white balance. Now, if you flip your camera over, down here is a little slot, and that is where your battery goes, and next to it is your SD card. Now, be very, very careful. I do recommend taking the battery out before you put the SD card in so you can properly insert it because there's not much wiggle room in here, and I have seen people snap their SD cards in here, so you have been warned, be careful. And if you look to this side of the camera is a little flap. This is where your headphone jack goes, HDMI out. And this little uh, USB port right here is where you plug in your charger. Now this camera does not come with a battery charger. So the way you plug it in or charge it, sorry, is that you plug in your USB port through a wire and you charge the battery directly in the camera. It's not the greatest. I do recommend buying a separate battery charger, but that is how you would do it otherwise. All right, so now that you know where everything is on your camera, let's talk about how to set it up for photos and videos. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna jump into your menus. Now the menus are laid out pretty simply. Uh, you'll actually see these tabs at the very top, and this is going to give you your overall like menu, feed, uh, menu categories, and within each menu are pages and pages and pages of menu. And I'm not joking, like each menu category has about 14 pages of menus. Like it is a lot. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is jump into your menu system. Now you'll notice at the top, there's different menu tabs. Now all these menu tabs uh, are, have different categories like quality and image settings, movie, network, playback. Um, most of the stuff you will never touch, you really don't need to know about. So let's go look at menu tab one, page one, uh, and that is file format. A lot of you guys are probably going to wanna shoot RAW plus JPEG. And the difference between RAW is that Raw is the way to get the best photos out of your camera. You're gonna get the most quality out of there. You're really going to be able to edit your photos. JPEG is like if you're shooting casual birthday party photos that never need to be edited or just like on vacation with your mom. It's whatever. Uh, that's what JPEG is for. I recommend most of you guys shoot Raw plus JPEG just for like the most flexibility of what you wanna do. And below that, you'll see JPEG quality. Now this is how you pick the quality of your JPEG. Naturally, if you're gonna shoot JPEGs, pick extra fine so you get the most out of your JPEGs. Underneath that, you'll see JPEG size. Naturally, you wanna leave this at large 24 megapixels so you get the most quality out of it. And now this is important. Underneath that, you'll see aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is basically the kind of letterboxing that your images have. Three by two is a very large letterboxing where you'll probably notice on this screen, this video fills from top to bottom and it's pretty wide. Now this is 16 by nine. If I made this video slightly taller, that would be three by two. And that is what most photographers like to shoot in. If for some reason you know you want it in this 16 by nine ratio, go ahead and pick 16 by nine, but I really recommend picking the three to, three to two aspect ratio. One by one is square. And honestly, like, I don't know anybody that shoots square. So go with three by two. And now if you switch over to the next page, you'll see high ISO NR. High ISO NR stands for high ISO noise reduction. What I actually recommend doing is leaving it off if you're planning on doing any kind of professional work with this and you wanna edit your photos later, you can easily remove this noise in Lightroom and Photoshop. But if noise reduction is done in camera, sometimes it leaves your photos looking a little mushy or a little soft, so I recommend leaving this off. But if you're shooting JPEGs, leave it in normal and you'll get great results. And after that, if you hit the FN button, you'll actually have your quick menu come up. And now I'm gonna go over what all these settings do, but only the ones that you really need to know about. So the first thing I wanna look at is drive mode. Now drive mode is basically how you pick how fast or how many times your camera's shooting. Uh, there's a bunch of modes in here, but most of you guys will only need to know the first two. 
First is single shooting. This is where you take one photo and then your camera stops, even if you have the shutter button pressed down. But if you keep holding down the shutter button and you're in continuous shooting mode, your camera will basically keep taking photos. And depending on how many photos you wanna shoot, uh, you have different types of continuous shooting. Now, if you press left or right on continuous shooting, you, you'll notice that it goes from continu continuous shooting low, which is five frames per second, then continuous shooting mid, which I believe is seven or eight, then you have high, and then you know high plus is like lightning speed. I don't actually know exactly how many photos it's taking, but depending on what you want, if you're just shooting your kid's birthday party, vacation, low should be fine. If you're shooting something with a lot of action, you might as well shoot as fast as your camera can go, which is high plus. There's really no uh, quality fall off, and there's like no downside to shooting more, except for having way too many photos. Underneath that, you'll see self timer. Now, self timer is pretty self explanatory. Basically, it'll take uh, a couple of seconds before it takes a photo, and if you hit left or right, it can either be two seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds, depending on what you need. Next to drive mode, you'll see focus mode, and you might be thinking, wow, focus is going to be complicated. Honestly, no. If you're shooting a subject that's not really moving around a lot, I would use single photo mode or single shot autofocus, and if you're shooting someone that's moving around a lot, uh, use automatic autofocus, the thing is, Sony autofocus is insanely good. Like, insanely good. And if it just, it's, it honestly is set it and forget it. I personally, I have this theory where uh, people that make these Sony cameras are aliens, and this is technology from the future. It is like stupid good. But if you're someone that's a control freak, such as me, I actually recommend using DMF. Now, what this is going to do is, it's going to allow you to Use autofocus, but if it doesn't nail the focus mark, you can simply put your hands on the lens focusing wheel and change focus yourself. Basically, you've got autofocus and manual focus happening for you at the same time. And if you wanna completely turn off your autofocus, simply go to manual focus, autofocus is off, and you control the lens. After that, you have focus area. Now, this actually really does matter. So depending on what you're shooting, you're gonna to wanna to pick different areas of your sensor for the autofocus to work on. If you're shooting wide scenes, pick wide. If you're shooting something that's pretty much sticking around in one specific part of your sensor, pick zone, and it's going to allow you to pick different zones on your sensor. You'll see like a bunch of boxes come up, and it's gonna allow you to pick different chunks of your sensor to have autofocus active in, and any other place, autofocus will not be active. Underneath that, you have center, and basically it's gonna pick the very center of your lens, and it's going to have autofocus there, but you can also change the spot. So what I mean by that is, if you go down below that, you'll see flexible spot, and this will allow you to pick a specific spot on your lens. It kind of works like center autofocusing, but it'll allow you to pick a specific spot on your lens, and it will allow you to just pick up here, down here, wherever, and it will just have be catching autofocus in that specific spot. And basically, if you understand what I just talked about in terms of photo mode, you are going to get the most out of your camera and get the highest quality possible. But if you're someone that's shooting video, it's honestly not that much harder to set up. Simply flip your camera to the top and go to the little square icon we talked about earlier. It's a film strip from way back in the day. And next up, you wanna go back into your menu. A lot of your settings will be grayed out or will change, but that's okay. You're in video mode, it's a whole new world. Uh, in menu tab two, page one, you'll see file format. Uh, once you click file format, you'll see a bunch of things come up. The main things that we care about is XAVC 4K and XAVC SHD. This is Sony's proprietary file format that they use for their cameras. If you wanna shoot in 4K, pick XAVC 4K, and after that, you wanna go down to record setting. Now, within 4K, you'll have 30P or 24P available to you. Now, this might get a little bit confusing. 30p or 24p is referring to your frame rate, and 100m or 60m is actually referring to the megabit rate. For us, we wanna always pick the highest megabit rate unless we don't have enough card space. So you wanna pick 100 megabits always. 30p is usually what you use for YouTube or TV, and 24p is what you use for cinematic filming or like short films and stuff. If you want something more cinematic, go with 24p. For YouTube, go with 30p. And underneath that, you actually have S and Q settings. Now, something that I didn't show you guys earlier is that this camera has a dedicated slow motion mode, specifically if you wanna shoot slow motion 
and you want it to play back in slow motion in your camera. Now, I don't recommend most people do this because SNQ mode does not have the same quality as regular video mode, but in case anybody wants to know, SNQ mode, you go in and it will allow you to pick your record setting and frame rate. Now, the lower your frame rate that it plays back at is the slower your video looks. So I'd recommend picking 24p, and then depending on what frame rate you want or how slow you want it to be, pick 120 frames per second. It will actually tell you at the bottom if you're getting five times slow motion. If I go to 30p, you'll notice that it now says four times slow motion. So SNQ is a useful mode in case you're trying to do something slow motion and you want the timing to be precise. And if you wanna be in SNQ mode, which is slow and quick mode, you wanna flip your camera to the top and you wanna go down to the thing that actually says SNQ. Once you're in that mode, that's when it'll do the slow and quick recording. Otherwise, it will do regular recording. But if you wanna shoot HD instead, you wanna go back to file format, pick XAVC SHD, that's a whole mouthful. And you'll notice that within that, you'll get different frame rates from 120 all the way to 24 frames per second. This is, again, just going to depend on what you're shooting, but you always wanna make sure you pick the highest frame rate. Now, one more thing that I quickly wanna show you guys is before we get into the quick menu is that if you go back into tab one and you keep pressing right, you'll actually get to something known as picture profile. And this is to be precise, tab one, page 11. Wow, these menus are so long. But once you're in picture profile, you'll actually be able to go into a bunch of different men uh, picture profiles here. And all these picture profiles are identical. They're naturally preset at something else, but you can pretty much choose and put them to anything so it doesn't matter which one you pick. But here you'll see different things like saturation, color mode, all this stuff. Now this is really complicated and I go in depth on this in my Sony a6600 tutorial, but just in case someone is curious, I show the exact settings there. But what I do recommend doing is playing around and figuring out what gamma and color mode looks the best. The one that I like to use for videos is actually, I like to use Cinema 1, 2, 3, or 4. And then for the color mode, depending on what I'm shooting, I often go with Pro or I'll go with S Gamut. This will give me the most dynamic range and stuff. Again, this is a very long, this is a very long conversation to have, but if you guys are interested in the exact color mode, I recommend checking out my Sony a6600 tutorial because that's more of a professional camera and that's where I put all this information. But at the same time, it's nice to know that all these picture profiles are available in a beginner camera like this, which would normally be in a uh, professional camera. And finally, let's look at the quick menu in video mode. So once you're in video mode, you kind of have more or less the same settings. Uh, what I do recommend doing when you're in video mode is switching your video to continuous autofocus and just leaving it there. In video, you're always moving, your subjects are moving, and that focus mode is going to give you the best results. But one thing that a lot of people miss is you wanna go down to the bottom right corner and go to exposure mode. Now this camera, most cameras are naturally set to like aperture priority program. And you guys might notice that even though you're in manual, even though you're in video mode, you can't really properly change your settings. So you wanna make sure you're in exposure mode, manual exposure. And this way you're gonna get independent control over your aperture, shutter, ISO, all that good stuff. All right, so earlier I told you guys I would show you a way around not using that small little button on the side to record video. Basically, if you go to menu page, uh, sorry, menu tab two, page three, you'll see movie with shutter. If you turn that on, now you can use your shutter button to actually start recording your video, and it's going to make your life and the lives of those people around you and all of your loved ones a lot better. Because that button on the side sucks. So, something you've probably realized is that the Sony a6400 is not the easiest camera in the world to figure out, and most cameras take a lot of time to learn. And if you really wanna get outstanding photos and videos, learning a menu is not going to help with that. What you really need to learn are the principles of photography and video, like composition, lighting, camera settings. So, if you wanna learn how to take your work to the next level, or you're simply someone that's really passionate about photography and video, I highly recommend checking out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. In this course, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to go from being a beginner to taking photos and videos that are actually impressive and Instagram worthy. So, if you wanna learn more and you wanna get started, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. With that being said, let's get back into the quick menus.
All right, so something you probably noticed is that I complain about Sony menus constantly, not only in this video, but like all of my videos. Um, it's a lot of menus, man. Unless, I'm, unless you're a professional, there's really no point in like dealing with this menu. But if you're a professional, I think these menus are totally worth dealing with. The last thing I wanna show you guys is if you go to the very last tab in your menus with the star, because honestly, this menu is the star of the menus, um, you'll see something called My Menu Settings. And within this menu, you can basically add whatever settings you want to this one menu page and basically make a custom menu. So basically you wanna go down to Add add Item and then you can pick anything out of here. There's 32 pages of things to pick, but for the sake of just simplicity and fun, let's say I pick Autofocus Drive Speed. Now that's just going to be added and let's pick another one, audio recording, and it's added. So now when I go back into my menu, you'll notice now that the same menu, my menu now has two pages. One page, which is the second page, is going to be for adding items, sorting item, deleting, uh, page, all that stuff. And now I have both of those settings in my menu one. You can also go here, uh, sort items, like if you want something, higher up or lower up on the menu. You can do all of that, have fun, make your own menu, but this is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more of this content and make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below if you wanna get the most out of your camera. With that being said, I'll either see you in the course or in the next video. Peace.